do wormholes really exist? Picture this, one day, we could use wormholes as shortcuts to travel to different locations in our galaxy or even across the universe. This idea isn't entirely far-fetched, as it has been proposed by numerous astrophysicists for over a century. But why and how could they exist? What evidence do we have at the moment for these green disturbances that could connect two areas of spacetime, potentially enabling time travel? Let's explore these questions in today's video. Before we dive in, keep in mind that I'm not an astrophysicist. I'm simply an astronomy enthusiast who learns everything on my own. So if I make any mistakes, please feel free to correct me kindly in the comments as it will help me and others understand better. To grasp why we're discussing wormholes today, we need to take a trip back in time. What I'm about to tell you may seem a bit complex, but don't worry, the rest of the video will be much easier to follow, and you'll see how everything connects. On November 25, 1915, theoretical physicist Albert Einstein published an article that would revolutionize the world of astrophysics. Before this, people believed that the universe was a stable medium with consistent properties everywhere. In other words, no matter where you were in the universe, the properties of space and time remained the same. However, for several years, Einstein had been studying his theory of general relativity, which offered a new approach to perceiving space and time through a single, more formal concept, spacetime. This theory suggests that mass and energy directly influence spacetime's geometry. To visualize this in 2D, imagine spacetime as a massive, flat canvas. When an object is on this canvas, it creates a dent attracting celestial objects based on the curvature generated by the primary object's mass. In reality, this visualization is a mere representation and it doesn't accurately depict the curvature of time, only the curvature of space. By the way, a big thank you to those who will like this video and subscribe. It means a lot and truly helps me out. Einstein eventually published his article, and his theory shook our understanding of physics by introducing a new perspective on how gravity works, as proposed by Isaac Newton. The more massive an object, the greater the curvature of spacetime, and thus the stronger its gravitational pull. However, there was something missing from his theory, a practical example. The theory of general relativity is accompanied by an equation that connects spacetime's geometric deformation with its mass and energy content. While we know mass deforms spacetime, we don't know how to quantify it. This general relativity equation presents an unknown element, something missing that would allow us to solve it. Just a few months later, on January 13, 1916, German astrophysicist Karl Schwarzschild responded to Einstein by suggesting a solution to his equation. He demonstrated how to mathematically quantify spacetime's geometric curvature essentially, how mass can influence spacetime through mathematical methods. This is what we now call the Schwarzschild metric, and it's where everything begins. If you can understand everything from this part, don't worry, it won't prevent you from comprehending the rest. In 1932, Einstein met Nathan Rosen, a young physics graduate student during a conference at the University of Pennsylvania. Impressed by the young man, the two eventually started working together. The idea of wormholes emerged from these two physicists' collaboration. By analyzing Schwarzschild's solution and other equations from years prior, as well as understanding how mass deforms spacetime, a mathematical solution was found. This solution highlighted how a black hole's singularity affects spacetime, which is called the singularity. At the very core of a black hole lies the singularity, a region where spacetime's curvature is infinite and gravity and density reach extreme levels so extreme that our current understanding of physics can't even describe it. Taking this into account, Einstein and Rosen speculated that this singularity might actually form a well through spacetime. Building on this hypothesis, they mathematically demonstrated the existence of a reversed black hole at the exit of this well. The connection between the black hole and this reversed hole is known as the Einstein-Rosen bridge or, more commonly, a wormhole. Unlike black holes, which draw matter in, these reversed holes, also called white holes, would expel matter. In summary, a black hole would attract matter with immense power and then expel it through a white hole elsewhere in the universe. 
For the first time, mathematical evidence suggests that wormholes could exist. However, this doesn't necessarily mean they exist in reality, as we currently have no proof of their existence. For instance, if we wanted to travel to Proxima b, the closest exoplanet to Earth located four light years away, it would take thousands of years using conventional spacecraft. But by traversing an Einstein-Rosen bridge, we could potentially get there in just a few minutes, an incredible feat. But it's not that simple. After the publication of their article in 1935, scientists worldwide pointed out a problem with this theory. Within a black hole, gravity is incredibly strong, so if there's a hole within the black hole, it would close extremely quickly and be very small 20 times smaller than the nucleus of an atom. It would close in just a fraction of a nanosecond, preventing any passage. This phenomenon is called topological censorship. In reality, one would not traverse a wormhole but instead be inevitably drawn into the central singularity. Thus, the Einstein-Rosen bridge is not passable. However, even if this hole is minuscule and closes rapidly, there is still a moment when it exists. So, if it exists, where does it lead? And what is it? Scientists remain unconvinced, and some are determined to find a mathematical solution to this problem that would allow a wormhole to be passable. Enter Michael Morris and Kip Thorne, two physicists who sought to tackle this issue. Fun fact. Thorne was the scientific consultant for the 2014 movie Interstellar, which many consider the best movie of all time, one of my favorite for sure. If you agree with that, like this video and check out the one I made about the movie, you'll be surprised. In 1988, two physicists developed a new wormhole structure that seemed potentially traversable. This wormhole was similar to Einstein and Rosen's, but with a twist, it was rotating on its axis. This rotation would prevent the central hole from closing, instead creating a rotating ring. To address the problem of intense gravitational forces that would compress anyone attempting to traverse the wormhole Morris and Thorne suggested the existence of exotic matter. This peculiar substance would possess qualities that would keep the wormhole from collapsing in on itself and stabilize it. This stability would be due to the matter's unique form of anti-gravitational energy, which would counteract gravitational phenomena. Morris and Thorne's wormhole concept reignited hope for the existence of stable, traversable wormholes. However, there's always a catch. From the perspective of general relativity, this type of wormhole isn't possible. The existence of such matter directly contradicts general relativity, which doesn't allow for gravitational energy. Therefore, a wormhole stabilized by exotic matter isn't possible within the framework of general relativity. Another question to ponder is whether wormholes could enable time travel. Although time is relative and depends on an object's mass and influence on spacetime, it's not possible to travel through time using wormholes. While we could potentially travel into the future using wormholes, for example, crossing a black hole for 10 months might be equivalent to 10,000 Earth years, we couldn't go back to a time before our departure if the wormhole were traversable in both directions. Another type of wormhole stems from the superstring theory developed in the 90s. According to this theory, at the moment of the Big Bang, quantum fluctuations occurred in the inflattened field. These fluctuations, essentially quantum scale variations, would have allowed wormholes to exist. These wormholes would be connected by cosmic strings, which act like tunnels and are also known as fluctuation wormholes. As the universe expanded, these wormholes grew and now form a vast network. In summary, a wormhole is only useful if it's traversable, preferably in both directions. The Einstein-Rosen wormhole doesn't meet these criteria, as it's not traversable, let alone bidirectional. If one were to enter it, turning back would be impossible due to the presence of a white hole that repels matter. For a wormhole to remain open, it either needs to be a cosmic string or contain exotic matter, which again, is only possible mathematically. Ultimately, the existence of wormholes is supported solely by mathematical models, with various forms depending on the specific mathematical solution considered. Some seem more plausible than others, but there is no concrete scientific evidence proving their existence. Let us know if you're convinced that wormholes could exist, 
And if you're curious about whether we're alone in the universe, check out this video that explores both sides of the argument. Thanks for watching and enjoy.